Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Newser Education. Um, today we will talk about momentum of light. Well, first of all, um, let's just simplify our um, our work. We will consider only um, the right light, which means it's flat wave front, um, it's electromagnetic oscillations which are completely synchronous, um, which means all in phase, all these oscillations, sinusoidal oscillations, um, and uh, they're monochromatic, which means the same frequency. So it's basically like a flat um, wave front of electromagnetic um, oscillations and they are propagating with the speed of light in vacuum. So as simple as possible. Can't be anything simpler than that, right? And we will examine what happens when these electromagnetic oscillations are falling on some kind of a surface. Well, we'll definitely consider a flat surface which is perpendicular to the direction of light. So that's, that's what we're going to do uh, in this lecture. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on Unizor.com. Um, I definitely suggest you to take a look at the whole course, because I will definitely use certain things which I have already covered in previous lectures in this one, and in, that includes formulas. Now, every lecture on the Unizor.com has a textual part, which is basically like a textbook, where I'm basically referring you to exactly the uh, previous lecture where this or that particular formula or statement was used from. Um, so I do suggest you to read that part um, of, uh, of unizor.com and whenever I'm referring to the previous lecture make sure that you know the, 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 the contents of that lecture. So all the lectures are uh, logically related and they are combined into a course with specific menu of course so uh, it is all is all connected to each other so if you found this lecture for instance somewhere on YouTube um, and just by itself basically without even the textual um, uh, notes uh, which follow this lecture on unizor.com I, I suggest you to go to unizor.com um, the website is comp completely free, there are no advertisements, so all for your, for your studies. Okay, so we are considering this flat wave. Now, what's next? Next is, again, I refer you to one of the previous lectures where we were talking about energy, which uh, electromagnetic oscillations are carrying um, with them. So the energy, um, which basically is the energy which is carried by two different forces, the electric component and magnetic component of the electromagnetic oscillations. So these are basically two forces, if you wish. Well, let's assume that electrical component goes this way, uh, magnetic component is perpendicular to it and then the direction of propagation of electromagnetic waves is perpendicular to both. So let's say this is the x, this is y, and this is z. So my electric component goes up to y, my um, magnetic component to z and propagation uh, along the x-axis. So electric component is oscillating this way, a uh, magnetic component is oscillating this way, and the waves are going this way, all right? Now, in terms of E and B, in terms of electrical and magnetical component, my total energy, electrical plus magnetic, is equal to, and I'm using the formula which I have already derived in some other lecture before it, Epsilon zero e square plus one over mu zero b square. Now, epsilon is electric permittivity, mu is magnetic permeability of the vacuum. That's it, it's all about vacuum. That's why the uh, index zero is. 
and the square of uh, electric and magnetic component means basically since it's a vector it's a vector so e square basically means e times e as a scalar product and obviously all of those guys are dependent on the time because they are oscillating and that's why the energy is also oscillating. Now what is this energy? This is a density of the energy which means uh, amount of uh, energy in the unit of volume basically. So this formula was again proven, presented in the previous lecture. The reference to the previous lecture is in the textual part for this particular course on unisor.com. That's number one. Number two. Okay, so let's uh, assume that there is some kind of a flat surface here. So, all these oscillations are falling on this flat surface. And uh, we will assume that the area of this surface is A. And uh, we also have to understand that there are electrons in it. And all the electrons are basically affected by electric component because it's the force. The force is acting on certain um, charges. Now, the nucleus of the atoms are heavy, but electrons are very light. So, the obviously, the most important action which is performed by electric force is uh, against the electrons. So, as force is oscillating up and down, the electrons in the surface of this particular object where the light actually is falling. They are also oscillating. Well, when the force goes up, uh, electron goes down, because electron is negatively uh, charged. And the force is always against, defined against the positive. So, this goes up and down, the electrons go down and up. Okay. Now, the uh, total charge of the surface electrons, let it be Q, which is basically if you have some kind of a density of the surface density of the electrons times area. It's the same thing, obviously. I will use Q primarily. Pr pr primarily. So there is a charge. These are all the electrons which are concentrated on the surface on which the light actually falls. So what happens with these electrons? Well, they are moving. And let's talk about the forces. Well, electric force acting on the electron is basically one force. But then, now, the E is um, the intensity of the field, which means that the force which is acting on the charge Q is the product of Q times intensity. That's basically the definition of intensity. But there is another force which also acting on the electrons. Electrons are moving because of this force, because of electric force. It's moving down and up. Okay? Now, it's perpendicular to the magnetic force. And there is a Lorentz force. You know that if there is a magnetic um, force and, and these are lines of uh, magnetic force, and then there is some charge which is going perpendicular, there is a force which is perpendicular to both. In this particular case, if this is B, if this is uh, uh, speed of the electrons, then the charge is perpendicular to both of them. So it's perpendicular to the surface of the board. So in this particular case, since this is the direction of the B, this is direction of the electrons, the speed of the electrons, because of electric force, then that would be direction of the movement of these electrons. So there is another component which is um, 
q, uh, 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 the same thing, times speed vector product with b. So this is basically how we will arrange this mutually perpendicular, proportional to, to v and proportional to, to, to b. So this is the speed caused by the electric force, this one. And this is the magnetic component. So this is the whole force which is acting um, on, on the uh, all electrons, all charges here and here. Okay? All right, so what do we do with this force? Well, again, it has two components. This component is acting this direction, this component acting in this direction. But since electrons are moving in this direction, it presents some kind of a pressure. It's called radiation pressure. So just because the light falls on the surface, there is certain amount of pressure uh, on the surface itself. Now, but we, are, we know that the uh, direction of these vectors is, is changing all the time. It's oscillating, right? So it goes up and down, up and down. But what happens with this force? Well, the, what's interesting thing is, whenever the uh, vector E goes to the opposite direction, vector B goes also to the opposite direction. And the result of this thing is again towards the increasing of the X component. So that's what's very important. It's oscillating, but the force is always going this way. Well, obviously it's not constant force, because these, since these are oscillating, the force is pulsating, but it's always in the same direction. That's what's important. And that's what makes the pressure, this radiation pressure on this surface. Okay. So, what is exactly the pressure itself? The pressure itself is only the magnetic component of this, because this part goes perpendicularly to the surface, I mean parallel to the surface. This part goes perpendicular to the surface. So we have to really talk about only this piece. So fx, direction of the x, this vector is actually q times v times b. And obviously this is all functions of time, because they're all pulsating. Okay? All right. So, we have the force, total force, which is acting on the whole surface. Now, before proceeding any further, I'd like to have certain deviation back to Newtonian mechanics. Here is Newtonian mechanics. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. Remember, the second law of Newton, which is mass times, what is acceleration? It's the first derivative of speed by time. Again, that's all covered in the previous lectures related to mechanics. Now, m is considered to be constant in Newtonian mechanics, which means I can actually write it down like this way. Put it under differential. It's a constant anyway. And what is this? Well, this is the momentum, if you remember, momentum of movement, right? So we're talking about dp by dt. And obviously it's all dependent on time. So force at any moment of time is equal to derivative or a rate of change, if you wish. Not mathematically, it's what is derivative, it's a rate of change. It's a uh, force is equal to the uh, ra rate of change of, mo of momentum. Okay, that's very important, and that's exactly what we're, uh, we're talking about. So, now we can talk about this momentum. Because our purpose is to find momentum of light, right? So, let's talk about momentum. So, increment of momentum is equal to force 
times dt, right? From this, dp is equal to f times dt. Now, this thing is called impulse of the force, right? So basically, increment of momentum is equal to impulse of the force. So I'm using this for force, and I can say that increment of momentum of the uh, object on which uh, light is pushing, because this is a force, so I'll multiply it by dt, and I will have q times v bt times dt, right? So I multiply force by differential of time, by increment of time, both sides. So that's why I have this, and force times increment of time is increment of um, impulse, uh, increment of momentum. Okay, fine. Now let's talk about this again in the simpler format. What is vector product of V times B? Since they are perpendicular to each other, V is directed um, along the um, y-axis, along the component electric component E. B is against uh, along the z-axis, right? So they are perpendicular to each other, which means the uh, vector product can be replaced by plane product because there is no because the sign of the angle between them is equal to one. So that's basically Q quantitatively. V O T B O T V T. Now, <coughs> again, in uh, the previous lecture, we were talking about relationship between the magnetic component and um, electric component. And we have basically come up with the very important formula for all these simple um, uh, uh, flat wave oscillations. We had the formula B is equal to quantitatively to electric divided by the speed of light. Again, if you would like, there is a reference in the text for this lecture to the previous lecture. You can, you can examine the previous lecture where this is derived. So using this thing, I'll just replace this with E over C. Now, I always put C as a parameter because it's all oscillating, it's all moving up and down uh, sinusoidally. Okay, so we have this, and that's very important, that's basically almost everything I wanted to show you. Everything else is pure manipulation in formulas. So what is this? Okay. Now this I'll rewrite it this way, okay? Now, what is this? This is the force of electric uh, component of the field, right? This is intensity times charge. Intensity times charge is the whole force which is acting by the field. So, field actually is performing certain work, and the force is this. Now, what is this? Speed times time is the distance covered, which is equal to now the distance is along this force. That's basically the y of t divided by I mean d y of t divided by c. That's the increment of movement along the y-axis, right? So E is a force acting along the y-axis, remember? This is y, this is z, this is x, E, 
B and this is how light is. So this is the force acting along in the direction of y-axis. This is differential, so this is 1 over C times differential of work performed by by who? Who performs the work? Electromagnetic field. Primarily it's electric component. So this is a very important formula. Increment of the um, momentum of the object is equal to increment of the work which is done by electromagnetic field divided by speed of light. Well, now we just have to talk. Now, there is a law of conservation of energy and the law of conservation of momentum. If my object gets this particular increment of momentum, where does it take it? Well, it took it from the speed, uh, from, from the light. So, somehow, when light falls onto the surface and is absorbed by the surface, the object which has the surface gets the increment of momentum and the light obviously is losing all its momentum because there is no more light. Light is absorbed completely. Which means that exactly the same amount was in the light. So the same increment which object gains, the light loses when it basically absorbed by the light, by, by the object. So that's the very important consideration, which means that the light has momentum, the light performs work, and momentum of the light is related to the amount of energy which, which light uh, is losing. Again, because this is when the light is consumed by the object, well, during that infinitesimal uh, time period, dt, okay? So this is amount of work which light is supposed to do because this is amount of energy uh, consumed by the, uh, by the object. So there is a law of conservation. So this is the amount of energy which light is losing and this is the amount of momentum which is light, light is losing. So not only light has, a mom has energy which we were talking about before, but light also has a momentum. And the momentum is related to energy of light in this particular fashion. So whenever a certain amount, if you wish, of energy is concentrated in the field, in the electromagnetic field, there is certain amount of momentum which is also in that exact field because it's oscillating, because it's doing something, etc. So it, it's a source of energy and obviously we know that the light is a source of energy because, for example, sun is a source of energy which is coming onto the earth. Everything, all energy which we have here is the result basically of the sun's activity. So all these rays of light which are coming onto earth from sun, they all carry energy and that's what the energy we, we, we are using ultimately. I mean, it's converted into certain other forms, etc., etc., chemical energy. So, that's a very important formula. Sometimes this formula is written shorter. So, instead of uh, differential, sometimes people use something like this. Without providing that this is function of t, without uh, using only incremental, etc. But that's basically the same thing. Because you can always integrate this and this, and you will have certain amount of energy which is concentrated in the volume and therefore certain amount of momentum which is concentrated in the same volume. So that's very important and that's the ultimate function, uh, ultimate um, uh, thing which I wanted to, to talk about. Now, um, this is energy which is flowing uh, towards the object in the infinitesimal amount of time dt. Now, remember we were talking about energy flux density. Now, energy flux density is amount of energy which is going um, through a unit area uh, during the unit of time, right? So, if we will divide this 
by uh, by the area now this object it has certain area A so if I will divide by area I will have the d w of t divided by area now this is per unit of time because this is uh, uh, this is uh, uh, derivative so if uh, derivative is basically by time so it's how much energy flowing uh, per unit of time if I divide by a that's how much energy is flowing uh, through a unit of surface in the unit of time which is flux density of uh, energy flux density now energy flux density if you remember was related again in a previous lecture um, so-called pointer vector now pointer vector which is actually 1 over mu um, e times b again the same uh, vector product which is going towards uh, propagation of light that's how s point pointing vector is directed so this vector basically gives you the flow of energy per unit of time per unit of area through unit of area right so basically this is um, this can be expressed as the pointer vector so well basically that's exactly what I, I wanted to, to, to show that there is a relationship between um, the flow of uh, energy and um, the pointing vector so you can always say that again increment of the impulse increment of impulse is equal to 1 over C um, increment of work over T 1 over C A times pointing vector right from here <coughs> pointing vector is per unit of time per unit of uh, area but multiplied by area will be per unit of time which is rate of change which is the derivative of uh, which is rate of change of uh, momentum and the last thing which I wanted to talk about is everything we were talking about right now was about complete absorption of the light by this surface what if it's not absorption what if it's a complete reflection well if it's a complete reflection then look at it this way in absorption case light has certain momentum in the beginning and then it's completely absorbed and the light has no momentum at all so all this momentum goes to the object in case of reflection light has momentum p and then it has momentum minus p because the speed will be in a different direction but it's exactly we are talking about absolute ideal reflection so the light goes this way after reflection it goes this way which means momentum changes the sign now the difference is, in this case difference is P in this case difference is 2P so light changed momentum by it we div divide we actually reduced the amount of momentum by 2P P minus 2P is equal to minus P, right? so this 2P is the reduction of momentum of light well, which means that the object should be uh, pushed with the momentum to P, which means stronger than 
if it was absorbed, uh, a completely absorption. So a complete reflection gives more push towards the object. The mirror-like object will be pushed more by the light than the dark object. And basically there were certain very important experiments about this. And the experiments were like this. So if you take some kind of a reservoir without air, vacuum, completely vacuum, and uh, what they had, they had something like a little propeller with squares of some material. So one side of the square was mirrored, another was black. So these are blacks, and this is mirrors. So whenever light goes this way, now, and this is like a needle. So if light goes this way, since this is reflecting a uh, surface, it will have more push than this one. So it will start turning. But the back of this dark thing is again mirror, so it will continue rotating. So that's a very important and famous actual experiment, just to prove that the whole thing actually is working as we predict through the uh, calculations. So um, basically this is again the result of the law of conservation of energy. Okay, that's it. I do recommend you to read the uh, notes for this lecture. They are basically the same as this one, but there are some references, etc. And other than that, that's it. Good luck. <laughs>